guys, how you doing? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're well. Today I'm joined by the lovely Emma, also known as Mama Lena, have I said that right? Yeah. <laughs> on YouTube and on her blog as well. And you talk a lot about low waste parenting. Yes. A bit of zero waste, plastic free living, etc. But with two adorable little munchkins. Mm -hmm. So as you guys know, if you saw my About Me video, I'm pregnant. Um, I <laughs> who better to collab with and gain some nuggets of wisdom from than you? So today's video is a little bit of a sort of general chit chat around low waste parenting and we're going to do a video on my channel which is going to focus mostly on the sort of pregnancy stage and then hop over to Emma's channel to see our collab on sort of early motherhood yes. low waste parenting suggestions. Yeah. And bear in mind, everybody's different. This is just what has worked for us. So if you've got anything that you want to share, pop it in the comments and let's do this. Let's do it. First up then, how are you feeling? Much better now. I had a pretty uh, nauseous filled first trimester, mm. which just basically had me sitting on the sofa almost 24-7. I felt like I had car sickness, but constantly. But I definitely found that snacking, which was something that I kept reading about, was like, this really helps with uh, nausea during pregnancy. So just sort of staying full and yeah. eating lots really helped, even if like I didn't really feel like eating. I was all about really like salty mm. foods. I was obsessed with bacon and eggs, mm -hmm, nice. <laughs> fish and chips. Yeah, I mean, it's hard being pregnant. You've just got to eat a lot. <laughs> yeah, I kind of do anyway, yeah, to be true. honest. But it's I was true. like, there's, I couldn't look at anything green. Anything green made me feel like a like, green smoothie with that. Oh like... <laughs> my God. I actually had a meltdown in Helsinki over <laughs> a smoothie bowl. <laughs> we decided to do a little trip to, to Helsinki for a few days and the only place that was open for breakfast on the Sunday morning was a smoothie bowl place and all my body wanted was like a hot drink and a croissant. And I saw on the menu that amongst all the smoothie bowls, which were filled with so much goodness, uh, was a cheese on toast sort of thing. I was like, okay, fine, I'll have that. that. <laughs> That'll be it. So I got to the front of the queue and she was about to take our order and she said, oh, we don't have any cheese on toast today. And I took it as like a personal uh, insult. Uh. <laughs> my chin started like wobbling. I started welling up and my husband was like, okay, so uh, you go sit down, I'll go find you a croissant. So he ran off around Helsinki whilst I sat, literally sat there sobbing. <laughs> Did you actually? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I was trying to hide it. I thought I was doing an okay job at hiding it from the other customers. But my husband said when he walked back after finally finding a croissant, and apparently the waitress in the other cafe across Helsinki was like, good luck, I hope you find one, because he couldn't find one anywhere. And he finally got one, came back, uh, he said it was like the sisterhood gave him evils as he walked through the door. Oh. It's like, why have you made her cry? What have you done? And just <laughs> got the, and the croissant back. Yeah. Anything green, anything healthy, I could manage a bit of fruit, okay. but I was really all about sort of carbs. And also, I should say, um, I phoned up my husband. I was like, I just want beef flavored hula hoops. Get me a six pack. And he's like, Excuse me, is this who is this? <laughs> I was like, I know it comes in packaging. I know it's disgraceful. But that's all my body wanted, and I, I hadn't moved from the sofa for about two days at that point. Yeah. So aside from eating lots mm -hmm. to cope with the nausea, were there any bands that you wore or? special pills that you took or any sort of medication or anything to deal with it? No, no, I just sort of muddled on through. Mm -hmm. And even when it came to taking like a multivitamin or folic acid and stuff, beforehand I was like, oh, I, I'll be fine. I eat really well. I'd spoken to a nutritionist friend of mine. She was like, you know, folate is in mm. green leafy things. Um, that's where folic acid comes from. So, you know, if you've got a lot of that in your diet, then you'll be fine. <laughs> Little did I know that I couldn't even, I couldn't even look at a freaking house plant because it made me feel <laughs> nauseous. I was like, okay, no, I'm going to take some folic acid. So what yeah. supplements did you take? Just, it was like an all-in-one sort of multivitamin, but designed for pregnancy. I think it's called Wild Nutrition and yeah. it's like a food sourced one. Wild Nutrition, which are a brilliant yeah. brand. And oh, I also they? use them. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're quite pricey and the midwives, when I went to see them, were like, you know, you can get, just get basic multivitamins. I yeah. Like, I just I want to know the sourcing of my vitamins. Yeah, no. Because I think, I believe Wild Nutrition contain folate versus yes. folic acid, which is sort of the watered down version of folate. Yeah, we're not professional nutritionists, so, <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> so feel free to correct us if we're wrong on that. Did you eat potato waffles? I didn't, no, no I didn't. And I have to say actually, throughout most of it, I was pretty good at like with the whole, still buying things zero waste. Not that I really left the house much, but I sent my husband out to go and get a few things. I even sent my mum out at one point to go and get some meat, some bacon, and then made her cook it when she, <laughs> she came back. I just like sat there eating it with my husband, and we all, this is all I want right now. Did you have anything that you couldn't go near or that you were craving? Like you, I just 
wanted all the carbs. And when you're not pregnant, you hear that and you think, well, whatever, you just yeah. want to have a plate of like carbonara pasta or whatever. You just want the chips, the pasta, the bread. Yes. Um, all together at once. Even though I was really not great at leaving the house, I still felt like I, we could get food in that wasn't too heavily packaged. Mm. Or like, I think one week we bought some pasta in the packaging because I just couldn't even face going to the, the bulk shop. What about takeaways? Um, pizza, but there's pizza. one that just comes in a cardboard box yeah. around us and it uses organic ingredients. So I was like, oh, I'm just going just gonna to get this. We also had a lot of pizza when I was pregnant. I Did you? Yeah. Oh, and at one point I really wanted Chinese food. Um, so I took a container into the Chinese takeaway which was just around the corner, and said, hey, any chance you can just Please put this straight, straight, straight Give me the noodle. <laughs> Nothing green. So how many weeks are you now? Uh, 20, uh, 22 at the end of this week, so 21 at the moment. Okay. Have you bought any specific maternity things? Yes, I have. Okay. So initially I was like, I want to find stuff that's not necessarily maternity, but it's going to carry me through pregnancy and beyond. But then it got to a point where I literally couldn't close my jeans. I was using a rubber band yeah. to hold the top the button classic. together. The first thing that I bought was some maternity jeans and mm -hmm. I found a couple of pairs on eBay. I think they're just top shops, so not particularly ethical, but they are second hand. And yeah, I really like them. So that's been, that's definitely been you a staple. You only need like a few yeah. items that you can rewear and you're done. I, I sort of figured I'm going to keep wearing them probably a little bit after pregnancy as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you won't, yeah. <laughs> the whole bounce back thing is a myth and, you know, you're going to take your time to get yeah. back to your shape. So maternity wear is always useful to have. Yeah. For the next five years, these jeans are not <laughs> leaving my legs. So I found a few bits secondhand, but there is oh, also, yeah. so it's a brand called Boob. Oh, cool. Which is an eye-catching name <laughs> when the parcel turns up. It's got smacked across the front. And they do like organic cotton, organic wool, okay. um, maternity wear that's sort of designed to continue to be worn afterwards as well. There's one that I bought the other day, a top that has like a, a, a sort of flap over the top that you pull back and it reveals like a hole here. Oh, wow. And you can just pull and still... In the holes in the middle, and yeah. then you put your boob in the hole. Yeah, you just shimmy it through. Yeah. There's a party trick. Bras. Yes, yeah, so you might like to switch. Kind of. <laughs> I've basically just bought a bra. Bought a bra. I've just bought a bra, man. <laughs> my my one like main bra basically died on me a few months ago, so mm. I was like, I think it's time to get a new bra. And also, my boobs were getting significantly bigger. They don't probably don't look that much bigger to. The you know, the average person, but for me, I'm definitely like, whoa, they're weightier. Yeah. I was getting a weird crease under my boobs whenever I sat down. It's like, oh, okay, it's, the skin's folding over itself. It never normally Did does you have that. underwire? No, I'm just wearing very supportive bras, but not underwire. They're just, they've got a good support to them. They're and they're not, but too. they're not maternity bras either. Okay. So the one I'm wearing today is the very good bra, the zero waste one. So I feel like my back size hasn't really changed much, so mm -hmm. I just sort of went up a cup size. I bought a few by Pico, and they okay. do organic cami top things, mm -hmm. but they seem to oh, hold the so weight. Comfy. Yeah, super comfy. I feel like I could even sleep in it if I wanted to. But I, I thought I'm gonna continue to wear those afterwards, and yeah. I'll probably get a few extra. Do you, do you find you needed maternity, um, not maternity bras. Breastfeeding bras. Breastfeeding bras. Yeah. You probably will want a breastfeeding one because it has a clip. Ah, uh, okay. So you just, Unclip it and the whole and it reveals the down ah. with a po as opposed to something like the crop top where you lift it yeah, up. It's hoisting to do. I would say that breastfeeding bras are quite an essential. Do you wear them now, like just as a regular bra? Oh, um, I don't because they were a much bigger cup. Oh, we see. But I wore them the whole time afterwards. Yeah. And I also wore them towards the end of my pregnancy. Ah, okay. Just when I was bigger and I didn't want to get. New bras so I just started because they're quite comfy. They're okay. Quite comfy. So that might be something for me to look into. Yeah. Bras. Towards the end of your yeah. pregnancy, so you've got them ready, and then you can just wear them. I treat myself. What about like any creams or stretch marks? Mm. Oils? Have you been no, indulging I, in any of that? I'd like to say I'm low maintenance, but basically just lazy. So I've got <laughs> got some leftover shea butter whipped body cream mm -hmm. that I made for a previous video, and I thought, well, I may as well just use yeah. that and sort of slather it on. But That's perfect. Yeah, I sort of think that'll do, but I'm not. I'm only doing that maybe once a week. Did you use something? No, I told you to use a shea butter. Did you? Yeah. Oh, oh, maybe if that's why. That, I definitely okay. use that. But just yeah, I mean, I did just used to 
like lather it up on me after every bath or shower just because it was quite nice and pleasant yeah. and I never do that kind of thing normally no but maybe as the weeks go on you'll become yeah. more drawn to that kind of thing and as you kind of I guess get more pregnant and a little bit more tired and bigger it's actually quite a nice kind of self-care thing yeah. to do did you get stretch marks or were you quite lucky no I oh, didn't nice. from what I'm aware <laughs> I mean, yeah you may should well. see back yeah <laughs> Are you doing any sort of yoga or walking or... I love walking. I'm a big walker. Okay, brilliant. But I sort of do that anyway. Okay, Um, but that's great that you're continuing it. Some people do just stop. I definitely stopped for a while. (laughs) For the first three months. Whilst you had the hula hoop. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Those hula hoops will weigh me down. Recently, I've just started getting back into like walking a lot more. I can't go as far as I used to. No. It's the frustration of my husband. He walks really quickly. And normally I can sort of like keep up pace alongside and wake up a bit of a sweat, but it's fine. But now I'm like... Oh, darling, slow yeah. down. He's like a dot on the horizon. And <laughs> I'm going as fast as I feel like I can. Yeah. But it's not it's not my usual pace. Were there things that you stopped eating? Um, other than anything like healthy and green, um, I had a weird like craving for marmite. Um, salt. Yeah, I got and that's really yeah that really savoury, salty, slightly bitter mm. taste. So I managed to find an organic marmite. <laughs> Who knew such a thing existed? Did you stop eating soft cheese? Oh, I see. So like the fish. Re- so what I did was I bought a book called Expecting Better, and she sort of goes into everything in detail and sort of questions the research that was done. You're sort of bombarded with all of the don't do this, don't do that, sleep on your left. Don't use that shower gel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I actually found that a really reassuring book to mm. read. So yeah, I, so I've sort of taken a chilled approach to things like I'm trying to think what I've been chilled about. I saw it. What did I see you eat? The, yeah, I think we had soft cheese at that dinner. Thing. Did we? Oh, we probably did. Yeah. yeah. I think being relaxed around these things. Is really key. Exactly. Again, exactly. not health professionals. No. So yeah, runny eggs, love runny eggs. But initially I, I sort of did go, okay, I'm going to cook them a bit more than yeah. normal. Steak, I have been having slightly more, so I love a rare steak. Uh, so more recently I've been doing kind of like medium to well done. So okay. a little bit So small pink. adjustments. Yeah, nothing too crazy. And are there any other books that you've been reading through pregnancy? So I didn't know anything at all. So I initially in a moment of mild panic very early on, on before the nausea had really kicked in I think I was about four weeks pregnant I popped out just to get a book that talked you through what to sort of expect at each appointment and what the appointments are and roughly what size mm. your baby is and what, what size side effects you might be feeling I don't know <laughs> stop looking I have to say I didn't read any books did you not no I've, heard, I've met a, quite a few people who said that they didn't it was that was really helpful so expecting better and this other one I think it's called how to grow a baby brackets and push one out that was really nice and basic written by a midwife one that somebody recommended the other day which is called how to have a baby and it takes a very sort of a natural approach to okay pregnancy and it's very really like a lovely reassuring book somebody recommended it to me on instagram and then the final one a friend gave me called the bump class and it's so many books. i know so many but they're all slightly different but what i found reassuring is that reading a variety meant that i had a a more balanced view of things. Any apps? No. The midwives offered a an app that was like approved by the NHS. Oh, right. But I just, you know, for so long, especially in the first trimester, I couldn't even look at a screen. Mm. Hence no YouTube videos for a while. So yeah, no apps. Did you use any? No. There's, again, so many apps with, you know, pretty much to the second countdown to your mm. giving birth date. There are several apps, and again, we didn't use them, but for when you're in labour oh, right. and to time your contractions. Okay. Gives you something to do during labour as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> we just had a pen and paper. Nice. Literally, no, it wasn't even a pen, it was a pencil scrawled on the back of the paper. Well, that was my husband's job to, to time, so he, he chose the old-fashioned pencil and paper. Nice. <laughs> Analogue. Do, do you guys have a home birth, a hospital birth? Or what, how did so you go? we had... What route did you go Jack there? was a hospital birth. Sunny was a planned home birth. But what happened is that my waters broke. Basically, you're prone to infection oh, because your waters okay. have gone and your, I think your plug has gone. Okay. So you are more susceptible to catch something. So they want you to be going into labour quite soon after that. And what happened with me is that I didn't go into labour that soon. Okay. So they wanted me to go into hospital to receive antibiotics, but actually proceeded to have a lovely water birth. Oh, I've been looking into that. It's the yeah. birth pools. I yeah. Think. yeah. But because I had been administered the antibiotics, which again, I wasn't keen on, but they sort of, you know, they... they Needs must. 
Yeah, so I had, but you can't go in the water with your antibiotics. So I had the whole time of my labor, my hand hanging out the birth pool because I was so intent on getting into the birth pool. So yeah, it just it was like <laughs> the whole time. But yeah, I really recommend a water birth. Oh, wow, so it was so magical, yeah. When it comes to prepping things mm. during pregnancy, yes. I've been geeking out on things like reusable nappies, etc., mm. which we'll talk about in the video over on Emma's channel. But the things like during pregnancy and going into labor and stuff, mm. I keep reading in books, I've got so many books, um, <laughs> like disposable knickers, get some, because you'll need them straight after giving birth. Um, yeah. And I was like, There's, surely it's got to be a reusable. So I was thinking a very thick reusable pad and some period pants that can absorb as yeah. well. So I think, I think disposability around postpartum, uh, pants and any bleeding you might have is just part of our kind of throwaway culture yeah. and convenience culture and it's not necessary at all so just like I was saying I would advise a combination of um, either period pants themselves so like Thinks or another brand like that um, and then supplementing that with cloth pads you could even use the sanitary cloth pads that you oh. might already have a few of those um, and just just pants that you would normally wear and a combination of those kind of things as long as you are obviously properly washing them up each time then it's fine but yeah. don't forget to rinse with cold water first first okay because I, okay. if you put them straight in the hot water sets the stain ah oh, and so then rinse <laughs> Rinse straight away with cold water okay. and then just wash in the washing machine like you would with your clothes and your nappies and everything else. So randomly my midwives seemed to be, or well, one of them in particular was really like clued up on reusables Yeah. and she told me about this <laughs> cloth device that can basically capture quite a lot of blood and then disperse it gently onto the pad mm -hmm. so it's not like a, a huge gush and just going to go straight through everything. And I can't remember what it's called but I'll, I'll link it in the mm. info box below because it's something that I'd never heard of that you sort of use to yeah, disperse any liquid. Reusable cloth breast pads are a bit of a must because, well, if you're breastfeeding, that is, because uh, if you're breastfeeding, you will leak, your baby will cry, and maybe not even be in the room with you, and you will leak. Uh, you'll okay. leak when you need to feed. Um, it's just a part and parcel of being a mum that's breastfeeding. So um, every day in your bra, you'll just need to pop a breast pad, and obviously there are plastic alternatives, just like with sanitary wear, but... Fortunately, there's plenty of reusable options, and so just like a bamboo, I'd probably say, or hemp, because they're most absorbent, okay. um, breast pad to pop in your bra, and then at the end of the day, again, just chuck it in the washing machine, come out fine. Great. Breast pads have confused the heck out of me. <laughs> I just didn't know what they did, and I was probably too lazy to open another tab and find out what they actually did. <laughs> so, do you have any waste-saving tips that you found that maybe I haven't mentioned throughout pregnancy? I think maybe just touch you on the clothes things. There's obviously a whole industry around maternity clothing mm. where actually I feel like borrowing things, buying things secondhand or just not even needing to buy at all is probably going to be absolutely fine. Again, because you're just left with this stuff yeah. that you're not really going to wear afterwards because you're not necessarily going to want to wear these kind of shapeless dresses or something at the end of it. So I would avoid really like buying too much specific maternity stuff. It's quite a short period of time. Yeah. I asked the midwives if I could reuse my urine sample pot. Oh, right. Which they were totally cool with. And one of them said, I'm going to start doing this with my other yeah. clients. Apparently it's something they used to do a, a lot. Did you take it home and just stick it in the washing machine? Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 that's true. Um, and then brought it back and all was cool and then there, it was two other separate midwives that I saw the second time and I mentioned it to them they're like, oh yeah, it's cool, it's a good mm. idea. It's interesting, I think if you do opt for something like a home birth, you probably do get more control over that sort of waste oh, okay. because I mean in hospital there is going to be waste Yeah. Um, and that's their default just in terms of keeping things clean and, 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 ha and hygienic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a good point about the kind of the, the waste in hospitals. I know, it's only, it's like, it's something that you but the can't really control and, yeah. and it, you just have to go with the flow. And I have to say, like, throughout this whole pregnancy thing, I think I'm pretty chilled and, like, go with the flow anyway with the zero waste lifestyle yeah. in general. But I think especially when it comes to going through pregnancy, I've been 
just like super chilled like if you mm. can't find something mm. that meets your usual standards just roll with it one thing i wanted to mention that i thought was really cool but it wasn't on the market at the right time is for it me. on the market now not quite i don't yeah. quite know when it's coming out but apparently sometime this year but it is december so <laughs> maybe early next year and it's a plastic free pregnancy test I'm geeking out, I'm like, is there one out there? There's got to be. But there is one coming. It's called Lia, L-I-A. Um, so if you follow them on Instagram, you can probably see mm. when they're going to finally launch. But I just thought it was a really interesting idea because normally it is a stick of plastic. And also not just that, it's one of those boxes that is wrapped and set in the cellophane. Oh, yeah. yeah. I haven't thought about I that. Think they are. So what I did, I just, the thing is, I knew I was pregnant within two days my body just felt completely but you, different. So your period was two days late? No, like literally two days after conception. <laughs> I was like, I know I'm Before pregnant. Before your period was even late? Yeah. My boobs felt tender. I was very tired. And I don't normally feel very tired. I have to have a nap after a meeting. I was like, what is wrong with me? Um, oh. And I just knew. I just felt very different. Just after I'd missed my first period, we booked a doctor's appointment and I went in. And I was like, so... I haven't done a pregnancy test, but I'm pretty sure I'm pregnant. Do you have any, like, plastic-free method here that we can try? And he was like, oh, right, uh... Okay, it's like, you joker! Yeah, I know. Um, he probably just thought I was the strangest <laughs> appointment of the day. He was like, oh, right, no, uh, we don't, actually. The only other thing you can do is a blood test, but mm. apparently that involves even more plastic. So he said, let me go and check with the nurse. I'll see if she's got a pregnancy test. And she, they had, like, this really basic, very small kind of plastic thing so we did that and whilst we were waiting for the results I was like a bit awkward if I'm not pregnant then isn't it <laughs> and uh, he was like oh no no you are you are so um and, you know you just know I just knew mm. I think it's quite exciting that there's a plastic free alternative coming soon it's been so interesting to hear about your pregnancy <laughs> it's a nice thing to share it's something I've never been that interested in before but I think when you're going through it and sharing stories and things with people yeah also everyone's reaction when you sort of go hey I'm pregnant and they're like oh <laughs> But as so in like, nice. Oh, they're nice, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, I haven't had any, any meanies yet. If you've got any extra comments or questions, put them down. Or you want to share your story, put them in the comments below. And head over to Emma's channel because we're going to go and do a little video there now. And see ya. Bye. Bye. Do you like butternut squash? I do, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's leek and potato soup and anything else we've got. I feel like I've just come around and like eating all your food.